In the realm of Middle-earth, where magic flows and legends are born, a peculiar ritual unfolds. The dwarves, a people known for their strength and tenacity, sing to the mountain. But why? What is the significance behind this seemingly strange tradition? Join me as we delve into the depths of this ancient practice and uncover the secrets that lie within the heart of the mountain. The Seven Rings of Power for Dwarves have finally made their debut in The Lord of the Rings. The Rings of Power Season 2. But it looks like Khazad Doom still has its troubles. When King Doran III puts on his ring for the first time, he not only finds a way to bring sunlight into the realm, but also discovers many veins of gold deep within the mountain, perhaps too deep. Previously, dwarves identified such things through stone singing, an ancient and sacred tradition of singing to the mountain. Can Durin the Elder's Ring of Power be more effective and safer than this age-old practice? We first learn about the art of stone singing in The Rings of Power Season 1, Episode 4, titled The Great Wave. In this episode, Elrond is seeking help from the dwarves of Khazad Dûm to build Celebrimbor's new forge in Erigiorn, which led to the creation of the three elven rings of power. As a diplomat, Elrond visits the dwarven realm under the Misty Mountains to talk with his friend Prince Durin IV. However, he is taken aback by Durin's demeanor. The two have been estranged for 20 years, and because Elrond is an elf, he perceives time differently and has missed many significant moments in Durin's life, including Durin's wedding to Disa. Disa, a caring and thoughtful wife, invites Elrond to witness one of her stone-singing rituals, showcasing the strong bond between the dwarves and the mountain. She explains that this involves literally singing to the mountain, a practice known as resonating. Through this method, the dwarves can sense what lies beneath them, helping them find ore to mine and determine the best tunnel routes. Disa describes it as a process of mutual respect, as it also helps them identify areas of the mountain that should remain untouched. For instance, mining a newly discovered ore like mithril is seen as risky, which is why it takes the dwarves a long time to produce even small amounts. Interestingly, stone singing is an original idea introduced in The Rings of Power. J.R.R. Tolkien's Legendarium offers limited details about dwarven culture, leaving many areas for the series to explore. However, the theme of connection between people and nature is a key element in Tolkien's works, making stone singing feel as if it were created by him. While mining and resource extraction can often be seen as violent acts against nature, resonating represents the opposite, enabling both the dwarves and the mountain to work in harmony. In Season 2 of The Rings of Power, darkness is spreading across Middle-earth. While the elves may have found a way to prevent the light of the Eldar from fading, Sauron is growing stronger, and figures like Agdar pose significant threats to the peaceful inhabitants of the land. At the end of Season 1, Ahdar sets off the eruption of Orodruin, or Mount Doom, transforming the Southlands into what will become Mordor. Even though this event occurs far from Khazad Doom, it has repercussions for all of Middle-earth. In Episode 2, Where the Stars Are Strange, Narvi explains that the eruption of Mount Doom, which he refers to as a fire mountain, sent shockwaves through the land and caused the sun shafts of Khazad Doom to collapse, leaving the great dwarven realm shrouded in darkness. Disa and the Stone Singers suggest that the best way to address this problem is to sing to the mountain again, hoping to reopen the sun shafts through the vibrations they create. King Durin the Elder permits them to give it a try, but unfortunately, their efforts fail. Instead of reopening the shafts or guiding the dwarves to dig new ones, the mountain collapses the small openings that still allow some light to enter. Disa strains her voice more than usual, but she still can't reach the mountain. In a heartfelt moment, Durin the Elder praises the stone singers, who have tirelessly supported Khazad Doom for nine centuries. 
Now, however, it seems their connection to the mountain has been severed, and the hand of darkness has closed around Khazad Doom. In the next episode, the Eagle and the Scepter, Celebrimbor and Anatar, who was actually Sauron in disguise, reveal their plans for the seven dwarven rings of power to Prince Durin the Younger and Disa. This project might offer a solution for Khazad Doom, though it may not be the safest one. In desperate times, people often resort to extreme measures, and Khazad Doom is certainly in a tough spot. In Halls of Stone, King Durin the Elder receives his Ring of Power and quickly begins using it to tackle the problem of the Sun Shafts. He identifies areas on the rock to dig tunnels and create new Sun Shafts in a way that feels unnatural. After that, the king starts making plans for deeper mining operations to extract gold and other treasures, ignoring the safety protocols he had established decades earlier. He believes the ring has given him the ability to see the mountain. The problem is that while stone singing offers a safe way to dig in harmony with the mountain, the power of the ring does not. Even though Durin the Elder can see through the mountain when he wears the ring, the lure of endless wealth often outweighs the danger of digging too deep. This highlights one of the effects the rings of power have on the dwarves. They may be able to resist Sauron's direct influence, but his malice still taints the rings, making those who wear them extremely greedy. Stone singing honors the mountain and its needs, while the ring's power leads the bearer to exploit it. In Halls of Stone, Disa purchases a tuning crystal, a round gem that helps singers adjust their voices to its vibration. However, she loses the crystal almost immediately and discovers it in a pond within the mountain. When she sings to locate it, she hears the growl of the Balrog lurking deep in the mines. Meanwhile, Durin the Elder dismisses his son's warnings and tells Narvi to dig even deeper for gold and other valuable ores. Thus, the ring not only offers an unnatural way to explore the mountain, but also risks awakening an ancient evil, the Balrog. The Balrog featured in the Fellowship of the Ring dates back to the First Age and fled to the Misty Mountains, where it remained dormant until awakened by the Dwarves in the Third Age. It killed King Durin the Sixth and his heir, leading the Dwarves to abandon Khazad Doom. Even Thorin Oakenshield's father, Thrain II, was warned against trying to reclaim the great city now known as Moria, or Black Chasm, due to concerns about the Balrog. When the Fellowship entered the mines of Moria, the creature known as Durin's Bane awoke and confronted them, brandishing a flaming sword and a whip. Ultimately, Gandalf defeated Durin's Bane. After Durin's Bane was defeated, it's unclear where the other Balrogs might have been hiding, or if any were left at all. Since Sauron didn't seem to recruit any to help him regain the One Ring, they were absent from the events of the Lord of the Rings. Furthermore, none appeared in the final battle in Mordor, which lends weight to the theory that Durin's Bane was indeed the last of its kind. Thank you for watching, do subscribe and check out other videos on this channel.